Hello AP. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the dominant seventh chord. This is our last seventh chord that we need to address and arguably the most important and the most common. So there's a special note to the dominant seventh chord. The dominant seventh chord is also called the major minor seventh chord. And that's sort of easy to remember because you'll see that we need a major triad and a minor seventh. So I will use the terms dominant seventh or major minor seventh interchangeably, probably more with dominant seventh. You will see the dominant seventh chord written uh, symbols as a capital M, lowercase m, seven, or simply just a seven alone. A seven alone means that it is the dominant seventh chord that we are dealing with. So now, let's learn more about dominant seventh chords. A seventh chord is the combination of a triad and an interval of a seventh, which we already know. We also know that there are five types of seventh chords that are commonly used. Previously, we have studied the major seventh, the minor seventh, the half diminished seventh, and the fully diminished seventh. And now we have the dominant seventh chord. <clears throat> the dominant seventh chord is a major triad and a minor seventh that combine to form the dominant seventh chord. Dominant seventh chords are abbreviated with a simple seven, but sometimes you may see capital M, lowercase m, seven. So now let's examine a C dominant seventh chord. So we have a major triad, C, E, G, and then we have from C, the root, up to B flat, that is our minor seventh. So C, E, G is the major triad. C to B flat is the minor seventh. When combined, they form the C dominant seventh chord spelled out C, E, G, B flat. Here's what it sounds like. When we hear the dominant seventh chord, it reminds us from root up to seventh of the sol fed syllables, sol, t, re, fa. Listen again and see if you can hear sol, t, re, Fa. And one more time. Try singing along. Okay, now we're going to examine the F sharp dominant seventh chord. And here it is. We have the major triad, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp. And we have the minor seventh interval, F sharp up to E. When combined, they form the F sharp dominant seventh chord, which is F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, E. And again, you can listen for the solfege, sol, t, re, fa. Once again. Try singing again along with it on solfege. And let's go ahead and examine the A flat dominant seventh chord. <clears throat> so we need a major triad and a minor seventh. So here is our major triad, A flat, C, E flat. And here is our minor seventh, A flat up to G flat. When combined, they form the A flat dominant seventh chord, which is A flat, C, E flat, G flat. Dominant seventh chords will always sound like sol, t, re, fa. 
So let's listen to the A flat dominant seventh chord. The dominant seventh chord gets its name dominant because in major keys, it is the Roman numeral five for dominant. So really, dominant seventh chords, when we start doing Roman numeral analysis, will be five seven, where sol is in the bass of the tonic major do. And then up from there, your seventh chord is sol, ti, re, fa. Let's listen to this one more time. Okay, so just to recap, the dominant seventh chord is also called the major minor seventh chord, and the symbol is just a seven alone, but sometimes you will see it as a capital M, lowercase m, with a seven next to it. The dominant seventh chord is a major triad and a minor seventh interval. So if we go on, we can now construct dominant seventh chords from the given root, the given third, and the given fifth. So let's do the first one together. So I've got an F as the root. Let me build my seventh chord. <clears throat> as it stands right now, I've got a major triad and a major seventh. So right now, if I did not alter this in any way, I'm looking at a major seventh chord, but we want a dominant seventh chord. <clears throat> so we need that major triad, which we'll keep, and our minor seventh, which means I need to put a flat sign here. And now I've just created a dominant seventh chord. Not a whole lot different from the major seventh chord. The seventh is lowered one half step. Let's try one from the given third. The C sharp is the third. Let me put one below and two above. One, three, five, seven. So now I need a major triad. A, C sharp, E, that's major. And I need a minor seventh. A to G is a minor seventh. So I am done building the A7, or the A dominant seventh chord. Okay, this would be written as this. Sometimes you might see it as this. Okay. And let's try one from the given fifth. If that E flat is five, then I need to one above that for seven and two below for three and the root. Let's build a major triad given that E flat. I've just made a major triad. Now I need a minor seventh. From the A flat up here, looks like we need a G flat. And there is my dominant seven. Chord. Okay, so take some time now with some staff paper and write down what you see and construct dominant seventh chords from the given root, third, or fifth without altering the given note. And we'll check back and see how you did in just a short while. Good luck, AP.
Okay, so hopefully you are finished with this or just about done constructing dominant seventh chords from the given root third and fifth. I've supplied the answers on the next frame, so please take a look at my answers and you can check yours. Remember with the dominant seventh, it's also called the major minor seventh. So we should be looking at major triad and a minor seventh interval. Let's see how we did. Please check your work. AP, you can go ahead and hit pause if you need to finish checking your work, but we're going to continue now on to the next frame. Okay, so now before we do this frame, it's imperative that you already have memorized perhaps the types of seventh chords and their intervals, because right now we have five different types of seventh chords that we're looking at. And you'll need to label these seventh chords. There are 15 examples. Treat every chord separately so that no accidentals carry through to the next chord. So please take out some staff paper. If you feel the need to copy these down, the actual notes, or a piece of loose, loose leaf paper will do, number one through 15, Carefully look at the notes and label the seventh chords. Your choices are over here on the left hand side. The capital M7, we now know as the major seventh. The major minor seventh is the next choice. That's also the dominant seventh that we just studied. Then we have the minor seventh chord, and then we have the fully diminished seventh chord, and the half diminished seventh chord. Please remember to put the number seven <clears throat> in with your response, and be very careful distinguishing the difference between a capital M and a lowercase m. Also recall that if you believe the chord to be half diminished, that we need the slash through the circle. If you believe a chord to be fully diminished, it's a circle all alone with the seven. So please take some time. I'll give you more time with this since they're all types of seven chords, and then we'll check our answers. Good luck, AP.
If you need to consult the, the interval chart for the seventh chords that we studied in the first video, uh, please do so. But at this point, we really should be, as they say, off book when it comes to knowing our intervals for seventh chords. AP just a few more minutes. If you have completed this, what you can do is uh, provide the specific seventh chord name. In other words, number one would be E. Number two would be F. Remember that seventh chords, just like triads, get their specific names from the root.
Okay, so let's check over our answers and we can see how we did. Please check over my work as well as yours. If I want to label the specific name of the seventh chord, here's how I would do that. For the first one, the minor seventh, I would put in lowercase e. For the next one, I would put a capital F, the triad is major. For the third one, I would put a capital A flat. For number four, the triad is half diminished, or well, the triad itself is diminished. So I would do a lowercase e. Number five, capital G for major seventh chords. Lowercase d for number six. For our dominant seventh, the triad is major, I would put a capital G for the root of G. This one would get an F sharp, lowercase f, because it is a diminished triad. And I'll continue with 9 through 15, providing the specific name either uppercase or lowercase letter, depending on the triad quality. In number 11, I should spread those out a little bit. So you can see it's just a C sharp and then a G sharp. So hopefully you did really well with this. Okay, now I want to go back here and I want us to look at <clears throat> the bottom. So those first 15 examples, you were given the notes and you had to supply the type of seventh chord. In this case, you're given the root and the seventh chord type. And what you'll need to do is build and construct the seventh chords based on what you see in the given information. So for all five examples, we are dealing with an F as the root, but we need an F major seven, we need an F dominant seventh, we need an F minor seventh, we need an F half diminished seven, and we need an F fully diminished seven. So, take a moment and provide us with constructing these seventh chords. All, different all the five different types that we've been studying. Good luck!
You should at the very least be on the third one, the minor seventh right now. We'll go over answers in just under a minute. Okay, let's go over our answers for this section, which is down below here. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the first one. So we have F is the root, we need a major seventh. Recall that major seventh chords are a major triad plus a major seventh. So I have F, A, C, and then an E. If I want the dominant seventh, and by the way, if I just took away this capital M lowercase m7 and you just saw this alone by itself, that means we're looking for the dominant seventh. Dominant seventh is a major triad and a minor seventh. So we have F, A, C, E flat. Now if you look side by side at the major seventh and the dominant seventh, you see there's only one difference and it has to do with the seventh. In the third one, we have a minor seventh. So we need a minor triad plus a minor seventh. F, A flat, C, E flat. In the next example, we are looking for the F half diminished seventh. Recall that the triad is diminished and the interval of the seventh is minor. And in the last one, we have an F fully diminished seventh, or just F diminished seventh. So we have a diminished triad and a diminished seventh from F to E double flat. So hopefully you did well with this. We'll continue our practice of constructing seventh chords. Thanks, AP. Have a great day.